but if the I.O. and simultaneous outputs don't justify the asking price, look for a compatible Core 2 instead. Thanks all for watching, and happy gaming. The Downscaling Chronicles rabbit hole has been a steep and slippery slope, and I'm grateful to everyone that's joined me on this journey. I never imagined I'd cover so many scalers, if not practically every known method to output 240p. And if I'm going to wrap this up in a neat little package, I want to leave no stone unturned. Which means revisiting the Extron EDID method. Allow me to refresh your memories. The Extron EDID method requires an eligible scaler on the Extron PCS compatibility list to be flashed with custom timings. These resolutions are created using the EDID manager, which along with the PCS software, are only exclusive to those with an Extron Insider account. What a card block! If you don't have access, then you'll need to find a buddy that'll hook you up with the software. The Extron DVS605 has HDMI in and RGB out, and would have been an ideal dac candidate. But the initial unit I bought was dead on arrival. The IN1606 was the next most readily available scaler on the PCS compatibility list, and as I was in uncharted territory, my initial efforts only had the custom 240p resolution running at around 56 frames per second, which caused noticeable frame skips. A guardian angel in the comments verified that the EDID method could run at 60 frames per second with a pre-made 240p EDID file they found online, though this file was set to output RGB, which the IN1606 could not. And even if I changed the ED to output HDMI slash DVI, the results were still sub 60 Hz. As the Downscaling Chronicles approaches its end, I wanted to give this method one more try, with another DVS 605. Last episode, I may have exaggerated the Tetra VIA size just a bit, as the IN1606 and DVS605 are also a standard rack length. Apart from HDMI and RGB inputs, the DB15 input can also accept composite, S-video and component with a breakout cable. The 605 and 605D models are video only, whereas A variants have audio input and outputs, using those uber convenient 5 pole screw connectors. <laughs> to get the DB15 RGB signal into my consumer SCART TV, I'm using the AliExpress VGA to Mega Drive 2 dongle that I featured in the last few episodes, which safely attenuates TTL sync. RGB or component can output simultaneously with HDMI, so with a DAC, you can send the scaled feeds to two separate CRTs. But 240p won't work right out of the box. First step is to flash the DVS, with a custom resolution. For those exclusive Extron insiders with the PCS program, simply plug in a mini USB cable to a PC, import the pre-made 1920x240p EDID, and drop it to one of the custom resolution slots. If you also have the EDID manager, I suggest you first alter the CE timing presets to ensure that each resolution is selectable on the console. There's no stock 480i output, and just like the IN1606, I couldn't get the 605 to output 480i by a custom EDID either. Any progressive signals downscaled to 240p had rolling 1-2 to two frames of lag, including 240p to 240p. The deinterlacing of 480i to 240p costs an extra frame of lag, at 2-3 to three rolling frames. I swear, my cheapo Dreamcast VGA cable has some bitch-ass sync, 
because this isn't the first time a scalus had trouble receiving its VGA output. And I needed to boost and clean the sink with an Extron RGB interface to get it seen by the DVS6005. Horizontal scaling has two presets, follow and fill. And I recommend starting with fill as setting aspect ratio to follow will squish the image horizontally. By default, the filled image is overscanned and off center, causing brightness distortion. Picture controls have full HV size and position adjustments, and changing the horizontal size and center should clear it right up. Resizing the width doesn't drastically alter the horizontal scale, so you can freely maneuver the image without creating additional horizontal shimmer. Vertical scaling, however, is more sensitive, and if downscaling line doubled content, you want to get this right. Using the horizontal stripe pattern in the 240p test suite, 230 vertical pixels was the magic number to perfectly scale the Dreamcast. Shifting vertically moves the post downscaled image and does not change the field order averaging, but wasn't needed in my case as the 605 averaged two identical lines to churn out a clean and crisp progressive 15 kHz. Once happy with the scaling, the presets can be saved to the unit for easy recall. There's a few more picture settings like brightness, contrast and sharpness, and unlike the Tetra Vio, sharpness isn't intrusive at a neutral setting. If you want to somewhat simulate composite video, dial it down to your liking. The DVS produces vibrant colors and each RGB value looks distinct to its neighboring step and thankfully does not resemble its much older brother, the Extron Emotia's color banding and strobing artifacts. Running the 240p test suite scroll test showed very minor frame skipping, and according to the OSSC Pro, the DVS outputs the custom edit at 60.03Hz, and the minimal frame stutter is likely due to the slight discordant in and out vertical frequency but honestly not anywhere near enough for it to be easily noticeable in gameplay. I was impressed with static screenshots when I first tried the Extron EDID method, where the IN6N06's finer line blending had more in common to the line decimating RetroTink 5X than the line blending Choreo 2, which was spoiled by spilling additional 2D pixels where they shouldn't be. The DVS-605 also proves to be a slick scaler, also restoring 240p assets as competently as the line decimating OSSC Pro. And not unlike the Tetra Vio and Choreo 2, 2D side scrolling is buttery smooth and has practically no HV shimmer for non 240p pixel art. The DVS-605 also holds its own in downscaling 3D games, by displaying smooth edges along linear objects, and contrary to line decimation, which strips away vertical resolution, blending the vertical axis adequately preserves detail to read finer text. The Nintendo DS TV mod outputs composite 240p, so you might wonder why I'm putting it through the DVS. The DS TV's native video is short and narrow, and damn it, if I paid for all 27 inches of my Lerva Profile Planus, I'm gonna use every phosphor. Composite video handling is impressively vibrant with essentially no dot crawl to my eyes, and the 605's picture controls make easy work of scaling to the four corners of the CRT. But the real test of strength for image controls is the PSP's windowed component 480p output and the DVS-605 is certainly up to the task, stretching to fill the 4x3 area from end to end. But for some reason, the Extron was either misinterpreting the input resolution or rescaling on the fly even when auto image was off. This was on a game-to-game -game basis, with LocoRocco 2 being the most difficult to handle. I also noticed instances of horizontal screen tearing but again, only for this one game. 
intermittent resizing only otherwise happened when starting up any other PSP game, but not during gameplay, where 2D and 3D games ran perfectly fine. Like the OSSC Pro, the Devia 605 can restore the Panasonic 3DO's 480i back into 240p. So if the console doesn't have a factory AB switch or is unmodified, the 605 will smoothly de-interlace the 480i composite or S video without any motion artifacts. Yeah, there's two to three frames of lag when downscaling 480i, but speaking from experience, it's not bad enough for me to notice. All the praise that I gave the IN1606 for its downscaling capabilities also apply to the DVS605. It's only going to downscale to 240p, but takes up to 1080p and some higher PC resolutions, with 1 to 2 frames of lag for progressive signals and 2 to 3 frames for interlaced. Jumpy screen adjustments and horizontal screen tearing were exclusive to certain titles or even just certain scenes on the PSP. Otherwise, the output is sharp, yet smooth, and non-240p pixel art looks fantastic on a standard def CRT. Full image controls are made even easier by the two front dials, coupled with each input having its own number of presets. In all, I give the DVS605 a solid 8 out of 10. I guess the Extron EDID method wasn't so bad after all. It can perfectly restore 240p and hold its own against a line decimator while smoothly blending all other content including motion video. The input and output connections, signal formats and menu control will vary across these Extron scalers, but I can attest to the DVS605. With no DAC or sync combining necessary, unless you want to output to two displays, there's intuitive picture controls, and it preserves much of the video's detail when downscaling HD sources to 240p. For the Extron Insiders with a compatible Extron Scaler, it's worth spending the couple of minutes to upload the pre-made 240p edit. For Extron Outsiders, you're unfortunately out of luck. But let's be real, having no 480i output doesn't make this a go-to recommendation anyway, where I'd say a Corio 2 is superior. If you don't need 480i output and you find a cheap Dido Jr. or LT, then that's another 240p only option to consider. So while the Extron EDID method isn't for the mainstream, it's still a perfectly fine option for the minority. Thanks all for watching, and happy gaming.